Welcome to the Daily Word. I'm really glad that you've joined me. Thank you for doing that. And for today's Daily Word, we're going to look into the book of Deuteronomy into chapter 33 and verses 26 and 27. Let me share those and then let's let's chat just a bit about those. Uh, it says, There is no one like the God of Israel. He rides across the heavens to help you, across the skies in majestic splendor. The eternal God is your refuge, and His everlasting arms are under you. He drives out the enemy before you. He cries out, destroy them. And I, I want to I draw your attention to this phenomenon, which is, I think, a, a, a great blessing um, and we need to maybe pray folks just a step further. And what I'm talking about is specifically this. There are folks who come to believe that there is a God, and a lot of times that's because of the evidence of creation. The heavens declare the glory of God. This is true. You look at the ordering of creation. You look at all of, of the parameters that have to be absolutely fine-tuned in order to support life, and you see that it is, it is just not uh, possible in, in the truest sense when you add up the odds of all of these things coming together in just the right way. It's just simply not possible that it was an accident. And so you have folks who, who will say, you know, I, I believe that there is a God, but generally they, they function as, uh, believe as, what we could call deists, and that is somebody that believes in God, but they believe that God has essentially created the world, set it in motion, and then stepped way back. Maybe God is watching, maybe not, but there, there was a great designer, a great builder, and he did his thing, and now we're on our own. And the Bible speaks again and again, our own experience, and, and we don't have the time to dig into this very far, but I think we could even argue that, that creation itself speaks against that, uh, that sort of God, even just the witness of our own bodies and our longing for God, our longing for intimacy and relationship uh, speaks to the fact that God is not remote. But let's look specifically at this biblical witness here because the evidence is clear, first of all, that God is not unmoved, that God, He, he in fact, loves us. Real interesting thing here in Deuteronomy 33, 26, what's translated in the New Living Translation as Israel is actually the Hebrew word Jeshurun. And it, it, in fact, it may say this in your Bible in the footnotes, this is a term of, of endearment from the Lord to Israel. This, this would be like, you know, like uh, calling your wife honey or dear, that sort of thing. This is a term of, of endearment, and it just shows the very personal relationship. And we may think here about how God calls us His child, instructs us to call Him Father, Abba, how God calls us His friend. God is not unmoved. As a matter of fact, as we're looking at the Scripture, God is literally moved. God, it says, rides across the heavens to help you. God actually responds. God is moved. God intervenes in time and history on our behalf. And of course, of course, God does that um, most distinctly, most powerfully, most personally in Jesus Christ. God come in our midst to seek and save that which was lost. Not only that, He comes to help us, but we, we shouldn't just think that we're left alone when we're not in trouble. When we're in trouble, God will come to intervene, but otherwise we're alone. No, no. He comes to help us, but also He surrounds us. He upholds us. He strengthens us. He is our eternal refuge. And let's take it even a step further. We see in the Scripture here that He actually fights for us. He fights for us. He drives out the enemy before us. God is actually out ahead of us. And, and I'm talking about, you know, spatially God's ahead of us, but more so chronologically, in time, God is above time in history and He is out ahead of us already making a way for us. 
And it says here, he drives out the enemy. And one of the very important things I think that we should keep in mind as we read the word enemy here is that we're not talking here about a flesh and blood enemy. When we hear that, when we read that in the scriptures, including the Old Testament, uh, we are meant to think in the, in the terms that Paul reveals uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit. He says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and the authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. So our, our enemy is not flesh and blood. Our true enemy is actually spiritual. And Jesus has gone ahead of us. He has disarmed them. He has disarmed those dark spiritual forces, the enemy of our souls, Satan, whose agenda is to steal, kill, and destroy. He's already disarmed him, and as he continues to intercede for us, he makes a way, he, he strengthens us for the battle. Uh, he, is, he is our armor, he is our fortress, he is our shield. And, and so we can see that, that, yes, we can discern from creation that there is a God, but this God is not remote. This God is not at a distance. We know that the one true and living God that we meet in Jesus Christ is with us and He is for us and He is actually dwelling in us by the power of the Holy Spirit and we can trust in Him. We can trust His work in our lives. We can trust that He has our lives in His hands both now and eternally. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. And until we get a chance to speak again, may God bless you and keep you.